Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at the Case Waves Floating Project. So we're going to begin by loading up the macro. So we're going to click on macro up at the top there, select macro, and we're going to be using the design physics.py macro. So we'll just wait for that to load up. Now we're going to go to load case and we're going to be loading up the Case Waves project that we did earlier on. So we're just going to load this up. So we're going to use the case data.dsph data file. Here we have our case waves project that we'd already done. So we're going to add a bit more geometry. So we're going to select the cube and we're going to call this our floater. And we're going to give this position of 1850 millimeters in X, minus 500 in Y, and 300 in Z. Okay, I'm going to give this dimensions of 300 length, a width of 1000, and a height of 200. Now remember this is in 2D, so we're just going to get a small slice of this, hence why the width is so large. We're going to add this to our simulation now. So we're going to leave everything here as default, except we're going to configure our float state. So we're going to set floating to true. And we're going to set our mass of body in kilograms to 30. And we're going to change our gravity center. So we're going to untick auto here. And we're going to have an X center of 2, a Y center of 0, and the Z at 0 0.405. And we'll set OK there. Now we're going to change the order slightly. We're going to move the floater above water. So we have piston, bottom, beach, floater, and then the water. We're going to check our constants. Everything's going to be the same as it was in the case waves, and the same with execution parameters. Everything's going to remain the same as it was in the case waves. OK. We're going to leave our interparticle distance the same. And we're ready to save and run our gen case. First, we need to save as, because don't forget, we've loaded the case waves. So we need to rename this to case waves floating. Now we're ready to save and run our gen case. So we're going to click save and run gen case. And we're going to check this in Paraview. So we're going to have a look at the all VTK. Position this in Y plus. After pressing apply, sorry. Position this in Y plus. And we're going to look at this color by MK. And we can see that we have our floater just there. And everything else is as we would hope. So we're going to go back into FreeCAD. And we're now ready to run our simulation. So we'll just speed this up quickly and just run through it. Um, we'll get the log up on the left there so you can see all the parts as they are being created. And if we just get up the output folder as well, so that we can see all the parts being output there. Okay, so now we're ready to process this information. So we're going to go to part VTK on the right hand side there, and we're going to be exporting the fluid part. So we'll call this fluid part, just like so, and click export there. I'll just wait for that to export. And we're going to go back to part VTK and we're going to export the part related to the piston. So we're going to call this piston part and that is the moving part. So we just export that. Okay. And finally, we're going to export our floating part. So we'll just tick floating there and click export. Okay, now we're ready to go into Paraview. So we'll open up Paraview there. We'll get rid of this and we're going to open up all of the parts we've just exported. So we're going to export the floating, fluid, and piston parts. Okay, click apply on the left, orientate in Y, 
Um, we'll just make it so this is visible. Okay, and we'll just color this by velocity and we'll watch this run through. So you can see that the position of the floating part is changing. So what we're going to do once we've watched this run through is we'll have a look at how we can plot the position of our floating part. So that's that run through. So now if we go back into FreeCAD, we're going to use the measure to, uh, we're going to use the floating info. So you can see we need an MK process. So if we go to case summary, you can see that the MK value for the floater is MK14. So this is the MK value we're going to be using. So we go back to floating info. We're going to use MK14. We're going to call this floating motion. And we're just going to export that. Okay. So if we just open up the file that's created, it's going to be a CSV file. And it's located in the floating out folder. So there it is there. So if we open this up. And we'll select the A column, go to data. We're going to go text to columns. We're going to tick delimited. We'll select delimited. We're going to tick semicolon. And we'll just finish that up. And you see that this is all now split up into columns. Now we want to plot our surge, heave, and roll. So if we select surge, and we're going to insert a table. So we're going to use an XY scatter with lines, and then we have our surge graph. And again, we're going to select the time column, and this time the heave column. We're going to go insert again an XY scatter graph with lines. And there's our heave graph and finally select our time column once more our roll column and finally we're going to go insert graph xy and there we have our surge heave and roll plotted against time thank you very much for watching if you have any further questions please refer to the jules physics forum or contact us at julesphysics at gmail.com